Sean and I are at Pearson Airport. What, uh, what, are, what are we doing this season? What, actually, no, you know what? Tell, tell the people who you are. My name is Sean. I'm Josh's employer. <laughs> so true. Uh, what, uh, what, are, what are we actually uh, doing with the Argos this year? Uh, I am the producer of our uh, docu-series that follows the Toronto Argonauts as they navigate the 2024 CFL season. We're spotlighting three guys this year, DeVar Stadios, Winton McManus, and Jake Ceresna, as they, uh, they navigate the peaks and valleys of life, football, family, lots of great stuff, and you're the guy who captures it. So You know what my favorite part about that answer was? How long it was? No, you started going into your stadium voice right there. I did. I, you, I, you I really do, did. I do put on a different a different dialect. The camera goes on and Sean, yeah. Sean's stadium voice. I feel goes like on. I'm just. It's been it's been a long day. So pull together has been a show that's been on for a while. But how how are we changing the show up a little bit to kind of like elevate it, make it a little bit better this year? We uh, yeah. So what we're doing is we're focusing in. Yeah. Well, we've hired Josh. We're we're focusing in on three of our key players this season who. Uh, we expect to play a, a very pivotal role for the team in, in terms of uh, giving us great content to watch and, and some of our fan favorites. So uh, not only are we covering the on-field stuff, but we're taking a more deeper dive into their lives away from the field. What makes them human and um, capturing them with their families, their kids, wives, girlfriends, fiancés, etc. And, uh, and yeah, kind of pulling back the curtain on on what it is a pro athlete goes through on a, a daily basis so and we're going to we're going off to Regina what but for this what's the storyline that we're actually following so, in this segment of the yeah. travel storyline for this upcoming trip uh, for episode two is we're going to be taking a look at life on the road uh, and so our first interview subject is going to be Jake Ceresna who is one of the newest Argos he came over to the team uh, via trade this offseason for Curly Gittins Jr., who was also a fan favorite. If he ever watches this, I am deeply sorry for missing our flight today and not being able to capture everything that we wanted to do today. But we thank you very much for allowing us to film you tomorrow. All right, looks like our flight is actually boarding, so let's try and let's try and catch it. Fingers crossed, baby. Well, we have made it to our hotel finally after an extremely long travel day to Regina. And I figured I'd take you really quickly through what I've packed for this trip because I had to pack tight, had to pack very small, uh, keep the footprint super small. Since we weren't traveling with the team this time around, uh, I kept it to one Pelican 1500 series air. What is this thing? 1535 air, uh, super lightweight. It packs into the overhead carry on and I've got my uh, trusty green Shimoda backpack. So the backpack was this camera, the a7 IV, it was the lenses and uh, spare batteries and Jesse's Peak Design travel tripod. That tripod was key for this trip. Again, I couldn't bring the big Sackler Flowtech, but we're doing a sit down interview. I wasn't able to bring any lighting. So we're gonna just try and find good available light. And if I have to, I'll bring a bed sheet down as a bounce, but we'll make it work. So inside we are rocking. Up top, we have the FX6 body. And I was able to keep it mostly built up with the cage. Let's show you a little better vantage point. So, tilt the cage, got the side plate, got the rear V-mount battery plate still on there with the base plate. Got some athletic tape here just to fill the gap so it stays nice and snug right in there. Next up down here, we've got the SSD and HDMI for the Ninja 5. They'll be hooked up to that. We also have our dummy battery. Then going in, we've got the VCT shoulder plate. That guy right there, it's a, it's a shoulder plate. And we've got the Canadian made shape arm, which is extremely expensive for what it is. But we do have the Sony grip next. Charging cable. Extra battery charger for this camera. We've got the lens support for the 100 to 400 and the 35 to 150. They're both pretty heavy lenses, so this guy is clutch. Then in the top square, we've got the Ninja 5. Use it more as a monitor, but roll back up there as well. Then we've got our viewfinder, it's that guy. And then our top handle right here. Trying to keep this guy in one piece this year. Last year, the microphone 
holder broke off and that cost me a lot of money to fix so this guy also crucial for some good scratch audio so that's the video kit right there we'll zip this guy open we've got the 24 to 70 with the glimmer glass already on there ssd reader uh, if we want to use uh, prores footage that's the card reader backup dji mic kit this is the magnetic top plate for the Sennheiser EWDP kit. We've got our filter pouch from Nisi, uh, 1 8th Pro Mist, 1 quarter Pro Mist, uh, but again, using more of the glimmer glass this year. Gives you more contrast. Sony 100-400, the game lens. This lens is mm. so good. Then finally, we've got the Satechi USB-C 4 bank, 125 watt charge station right here so instead of bringing v-mount chargers and everything else i've actually picked up these guys right over here as well as the newer version oh hey josh in the reflection uh these are great because you can charge them with USB-C, and when you've got a 125 watt power bank you can charge four of these guys up real quick and that is way smaller than a v-mount charger you can also charge your phone, you can charge your laptop. Uh, I'm also charging, oh, look at that, the EWDP. Plugged this in just a few minutes ago, it's gone up 4% already, so great piece of kit to have to charge up a whole bunch of stuff. But we're gonna go for dinner, so I'll take you guys out there, meet some of the other guys, and uh, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow, or in a bit. What are you doing, you're vlogging too? Really? The battery's not there, I thought I put a fresh one in. I know how to do my job. Josh, you made it out here, bro. How you feeling? Was it like the big seats? Oh my goodness, bro. This guy's supposed to be a pro. I, uh, What's listen, the first rule of joshing, bro? I got... Be I prepared! Got... Well, we wrapped our interview with Jake this morning. How'd it go? Phenomenal. Went great. Could have given him a little more headroom maybe, but we'll do that the next time. Sorry, Jen. Shout out, Jen. Shout out to Jen. Uh, yeah, interview looked great. We basically used available light. Uh, picked a frame that looked pretty nice inside the hotel to show it's a road game and uh, we used a bathroom towel as a bounce. I forgot to film anything, so take my word for it, it worked out well. Uh, now we're just out to get some lunch. We gotta... Sometimes cut. you gotta MacGyver the shot with a bathroom towel. Solid investment, I like, solid investment. I like to overpack, so I'm prepared for anything, but uh, interview looked great. We got two angles. Uh, we're gonna be following Jake today as, we, uh, as he goes through his warm-ups, his pre-game ritual, and then it's game time. Yeah. This is the spot, eh? Well, this video has definitely been kind of all over the place. Uh, this was this trip was three weeks ago now, and I've been struggling to get this one out, um, but I, I wanted to get something out anyway. Um, traveling on the road with a professional football team when you're a film crew of one or two, Sean is, again, directing and producing. I'm having to set up lights, audio, camera, all of that stuff uh, on a very tight timeline because the team only flies in 
the day before the game, and then they actually fly out the day after. Did I dent my lens? I can't tell. So the team only flies in the day before the game, and then they're flying out immediately after the game in most cases. So they wrap up that game, they grab a bite to eat, they drive straight back to the charter plane, and they're taking off by midnight. And we are landing generally between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m., depending on where the game is happening. So it's a really tight turnaround, and it's tough to get these kind of vlog behind the scenes videos done. So all that to say that creating these behind the scenes videos can be pretty tough, but I'm glad I got something out. And you can see from some of the clips that I got throughout the game, a lot of what I'm getting is sideline game coverage. I try and stay as tight as possible, but following a ball uh, can be tough at times, especially when you've got officials that can run in front of your camera or other players, coaches, and fans that might get rowdy and uh, interrupt your shot, but you got to just try and get what you can every single time and just make sure you know where that ball is going to be flying off to. Um, and I let that one shot breathe quite a bit longer at the end there because that was shot manually focusing and I was pretty stoked on it. It was as wide open as the 400 can be at 5.6, which might as well be 2.8 in that really long focal length. So it was really fun to get that shot. Unfortunately, the Argos didn't win that game in Regina, but that's part of this documentary series. We're showing the ups and the downs of the Toronto Argonauts this season, and, well, it's uh, it's ongoing. So hopefully you got something out of that video. Uh, it was fun to make. Uh, I'm going to try and get better at doing these behind-the-scenes videos, um, but it's a work in progress.